If you're trying to figure out what is the cheapest way to back up your NAS to a cloud, then watch this video. Sam is asking, uh, he has 1282 T3 with 40 terabytes of data and um, he needs to back it up to the cloud. And this is like anyone else might uh, think as well when they get their NAS, they realize that um, not RAID on its own is not going to protect your data. So it's going to give you this redundancy when the drive fails, then um, your data is not lost and others can still connect to a NAS and access the data, upload or download, and you just need to uh, slot the new drive in and, and uh, rebuild the RAID. And then some people do a, also a backup, like connect USB drive or, or something and, and, and back the device up. But there are other risks like um, flooding, fire, burglars, stealing your NAS. For that reason, you need to consider something uh, like a remote so you could back up to a cloud. And the, the worry uh, that the cheapest option really you could possibly have, which before we move to the actual cloud services, is um, having either a cheap NAS into another location to your home or um, office or if you've got some agreement with your friends or something that you, they will share a certain storage space on their NAS and in exchange you're going to give them access uh, of certain storage space on your NAS so you can set up this automated backup from one NAS to another remotely um, happening in the background. So in that, that way it, it effectively costs you really nothing. It just costs you the the, the, the storage space, how much you're going to pay for those hard drives to uh, put them in your NAS and, and keep them running. That's it, that's your cloud. But if you really want to have a true cloud uh, backup, then um, then there are a few options for you. If you have just few folders, not too much of data to back up, you can consider something simple like uh, Dropbox, uh, Drive, um, any of these uh, services, because QNAP and Synology will allow you to um, enable something called uh, um, hyper sync or back backup sync, which means you can create uh, several accounts either on one platform or, or different uh, cloud service platforms. And uh, you can link them on your NAS so that certain folders will be automatically synced with these cloud providers. So you effectively, effectively have several cloud platforms funneling into one folder on your NAS so you've got access to this, um, this folder, you can do what you want. That's, that's if you have not too much of data um, to back up, then you can play with this. You can actually manage to have this backup um, in place effectively for free. But if you are talking about terabytes of data, then you will need to consider something already a bit more serious, like um, Amazon S3 or, or Backblaze or Azure or anything like that, or Rackspace these sort of uh, options because um they will they will charge you usually per gigabyte transferred so you are looking at some somewhere like um, one to two pence per per gigabyte transferred and um and what are the options really that you might go uh to hyper backup um or in a synology option as well you can scroll through and might think like which ones are the best because um they're all look similar to you because but if you're looking for the cheapest options you usually gonna end up anyway with like basics like uh, amazon or or, or backblaze or azure many other uh, providers cloud backup providers are actually using services like azure and then rebadging it and reselling as their own service so you just go to the basics and and, and go and choose it that way. So there are so many options really to go for Amazon S3 or Glacier, which is more like archive backups, Azure, Backblaze. So the small options like uh, Box and Dropbox and Google Drive. And, and there are loads and, and, and many, many ways of backing up. But um, let's have a, have a look what is the cheapest option because this is what we promised to find out. So here's, um, if you go to medium.com, they got regularly updated um, table of uh, services and how much they, 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 they charge and it's been for a long time that Backblaze is really the cheapest way to back up your NAS or any other device so <clears throat> but let's compare if you would go even for a simple uh, folder backup then it would cost you like around $60 a year 
and uh, compared to other services like half price almost but um, we wouldn't look at um, these home sort of folder synchronization uh, options they are going to go to in proper storage so if you would have 40 terabytes they got in backlight's website if you go cloud storage pricing they got actually a calculator built in so if you would have um, 40 terabytes for example in this case to be uploaded obviously it's initial backup initial data transfer what is going to take the most of the time and uh, most of the resources so you, because you need to move all this big folder of big data to to the cloud so that, that initially will cost you in this case 2438 it might be for free if you sign, sign up for um free trial at the beginning so you could transfer some data already for free or uh, you might not need to back up entire NAS you, you might actually just choose which bits are really the most sensitive which you could not afford to lose at any time and then back up only those bits but uh, this is what I would, would, that's how much it would cost if you would need 40 terabytes of data transferred um, then on the back blaze it will cost you two thousand four hundred dollars and other com uh, compared to s3s like ten thousand microsoft eight thousand google nine thousand so it's like really small amount of money what you would need to pay if you have synology they got the c2 cloud uh you can you can back up um let's say 40 terabytes oh that's sorry 40 terabytes if you back up that costs very similar like backblaze 2470 euros so somewhere in that mark similar to dollars but you get um if you got synology you get so much um better functionality really because with new c2 cloud you can actually instead of backing up your nas you can back it up if you want but you can actually choose to keep this data on a cloud on the c2 cloud and you mount this cloud storage to your nas in a way that users connecting to your nas do not even realize that this storage this data is actually living only in a cloud and, and this is why it's so useful because there's so, so, so often there is some archive data which you don't need uh, such a fast access like if, if you would have 10 gigabit um, NAS solution on, on in your premises in your office then you would probably want the speed on the live projects if you'd work on video editing or AutoCAD or something like that when you need really massive uh, really fast speeds <clears throat> then you would keep this copy on your local NAS but if it's some like old projects or something you might actually want to choose to keep it in the cloud only um, so, so, so we st st uh, save some space because cloud storage is um, just a big server farm so if one server falls uh, fails the other one takes over and it's really difficult to actually lose the data in the cloud but there are always with third-party providers they, they set their own rules How, what do you do with data how much are going to cost you this year and on the rules of withdrawing it and stuff like that it's, it's just difficult with synology c2 it's this your it's the same platform so it's synology nas synology cloud it's all linked together and um okay this this is about this uh, backing up to the real cloud and let's talk a little bit about um uh, getting away around paying as much and there are uh, a few guys online is gonna show you how to actually achieve that because you can pretend that your NAS is actually a, um, a computer. <laughs> so if you've got um, any plus series NAS, you can install um, a Linux station and then uh, go for a crash plan option for $10, $10 a month. They've got unlimited backup. So all you need to do is just to go to Linux station, install Linux. Uh, it's not too difficult, it's really straightforward. You can actually look up this title in YouTube and, and do it yourself. So install that, install the crash plan um, uh, app on, on, the, on the Linux and, uh, and back it up. So in this case, you got five terabytes to back up. You, can, you got access from Linux station to, um, to your NAS shared folder. So you can actually back up entire NAS if you want to, or you can just uh, pick which folders you want to back up. And, and it's all automatic and the process and on the crash plan side, it's gonna look like they will see that as a computer, not as an, as a NAS. Because if they would know if it's that's a NAS, then they would charge you like um, business rates because they would expect you to, to, that you are a sort of business and you you can afford paying more. 
this so, so in this case he backed up five terabytes for ten dollars which is ridiculous <laughs> so he can do the same similarly you can uh, trick the system with um, a Chronos true, true image as well you can pretend that you got you're running Linux but actually you're going to be backing up your NAS so these are the options really how you can back up your NAS you can back it up remotely to another NAS you can back up to um, uh, for free for these uh, 10 gigabit, 10 gigabyte, five gigabyte like Google Drive options, which are for uh, com users. You can back up to the real server farm cloud, or you can find ways around to trick the system and uh, and back up uh, your NAS on cheap. Um, I hope this was helpful, and uh, if you got any questions, you can go to NAS Compares or ask NASCompares.com. Put the question in there. Uh, or if you go to NAS Compares on the form, you can fill the form, send the email to info NAS Compares. If the question will be interesting enough, we're going to shoot a video so we can help others as well. So we help you, we help them, <laughs> everyone happy. And I hope this was helpful for you and have, have a lovely day yourself.